and welcome to another episode of Shit You Should Know. So today we've got Mel with us here. Um, Mel's been, been training with myself at Unit 1 for a good few years now. And um, we thought it'd be good to talk about your journey and you know, the progress we've made in everyday life. Yes. And so Mel, do you want to introduce yourself to our listeners to start off with? Yeah, sure. So I'm um, Melanie Tillett. I am the CEO and founder of a company called Tillett's Clothing. I'll just get that one in there. Um, <laughs> and I'm literally next door but one to Unit 1, so it made perfect sense to uh, to, to come and work with you guys because it's very convenient with, for, uh, for me for work. So, uh, so yeah, so that's me. I'm 57 year old. Single, currently. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's well. <laughs> um, But yeah, so that's me. Yeah. And um, so where was it, well, when was it that you thought, you know, I'm going to start taking charge of my health, my fitness, and start getting into training, and what was it that gave you that, gave you that turning point? Because it wasn't always a part of No, it wasn't. It's not, it's, I'm going to say, in all honesty, fitness and health and things like that have never been a key thing in my life. I've always been a busy person, always on the go. Um, and I think coming out the end of the pandemic was a key moment because I'd have the family living with me. I've been cooking and feeding a family again, making desserts, doing all the things that we did during the pandemic, drinking way too much because the weather was great and was all in the garden and the pandemic actually wasn't a really, really bad time for us. I was working still as well. But I happened to just walk past the mirror, I have a big mirror in the house where we do a lot of our fashion shoots. And I just walked past the mirror one day and glanced sideways and I thought, good God, you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to do something for yourself. This can't continue because I'd I'd ballooned in weight. I'm probably about three stone heavier than I am now. And um, I first of all, after looking at that image of myself in the mirror, first of all, I started walking, doing a lot of walking around the village. And as I felt myself getting a little bit healthier after that, I thought, you know what, I want to continue this and I want to improve a bit more. And that's when I kind of came to see you guys, really. Yeah. And how how you found the journey from starting till now? That's a big question, Dorothy. Well, it is a big question. But I think for somebody of my age, in my uh, what I want, what I'm saying, going on towards my mid fifties when I first started with you, I think one massive thing is that it's never too old. You're never too old to start. People tend to think, oh, I'm too old. You know, I've had menopause. This has happened to me. That's happened. I've got a creaky knee or a bad back or whatever. I just think don't use those as excuses because it, you're never too old to actually get yourself in better shape. Mm-hmm. It might not be that you get monumentally better, but small things can make a massive difference. Yeah. Um, and for me, it was just about getting just getting the weight off to start off with was the, the main thing. I think we all, as women, tend to think about weight as losing weight making you healthier, but I don't think just losing it does. It's, it's mobility, I think, mm-hmm. to start off with was one of the big things. I remember saying to you, Georgina, when we first started, the very first session I came to with you, you were saying to me, right, just take a seat on the mat and we'll do this and then just get up and do that and then we're just going to go back on the mat and do that. And I went, Jesus, it's hard. It, 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 the hardest part about this is getting up and down off the floor. <laughs> and it was. Yeah. So for me, actually, just even being able to get up and down off the floor better, that was a massive improvement yeah. from the very start. And I remember after like four or eight weeks actually saying the biggest improvement I've seen is the getting Get up and down, down is a lot easier. But you can notice the difference in timing of sessions, can't you? That how quickly clients move from exercise to exercise. Yeah. It's like, oh, we have time for another set, or we have time for another exercise now because things are quicker and you're moving yes. quicker and you're not as out of breath, recovery time improves. So over the last three years, yeah, it's, yeah. It's Definitely. Incredible. And I think I remember saying one thing to you, and you often remind me of it, I think I'd only been, we'd been with you about six months and I'd gone on holiday to Spain. <laughs> I don't remember saying that. I was laying on the sunbed on the beach and it would be a monumental effort to get up when you're really hot and I'd actually just picked up off this sunbed. <laughs> well, that was easy. Yeah, you said about doing the walkouts yeah, to get up and down it. off the... <laughs> yeah, so just silly things like that yeah. on a day-to-day basis. Um, obviously, we've gone a little bit beyond that now and I think I feel like I'm fitter than I probably was in my very early days because upon leaving school at 16 to being around 20 year old, I worked on the farm, so I was doing a very manual job and I feel that strength's come back. Yeah. Not to that extent, but and my fitness and my strength is almost, yeah. I feel... I've definitely seen a difference from yesterday and the yeah, first time I trained you as well. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Um, absolutely, because yeah. I had a velvet on yesterday. <laughs> She's strong, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> but you don't realise, but well, even yeah. doing even day to day things like bags of dog food or, um, getting me shopping in and out of the car because I'm one of these impatient people. If I've got a boot full of shopping, 
I don't want to have to go back two or three times. I want to carry it all in in one go. Yeah. You know, so it's it's just simple things that have made a massive difference, really. But they're they're simple things, but the huge things, aren't they? Because they happen every day, mm. every week, and like you said before about the grandkids. Yeah. Being able to run up to them, pick them up, throw them over your head, throw them around, yeah. and not go, oh, I can't do that because my back, and can't do that because my hip or anything. Yeah. And, and strengthen your arms to pick them up. That's true. There's nothing nicer than when I go around to any of them, uh, even like. My youngest granddaughter, she's 18 months old, and I've been out at the weekend, and they haven't brought the pram, so we're all taking it in turns at carrying her. And I could carry her as far as anybody else could carry yeah. her, whereas before, there's no chance, because she's quite a heavy little thing. Yeah. So just silly things like that, and when they come running up to you and, pick me up, Grandma, and you can do it. Yeah, yeah easily. I, I love those moments as well, when you have a moment like that, you're like, this is why I train. It's like, you can just imagine being yeah. in the gym, doing farmers' carries, like, oh, I see a reason why I do this Definitely. now. Yeah. Yeah. So pre Georgina and you did what? What's yeah. what sort of stuff had you tried or what was what was you doing like exercise oh, diet wise? I think we're like... gonna have to go back to the eighties <laughs> when you had your leggings on and your leotard <laughs> would be bum over the top of the leggings. It was that kind of Jane Fonda look. That was it. I mean I used to go um, do aerobics, I've done bits and pieces like that. I'm not very coordinated, we always laugh about that, don't we, in our sessions because I'm not very coordinated. So that I've walked quite a lot over the years. Um, but formal exercise, gym joining, that kind of thing, never. Just no. haven't done it. Never did it. I mean, I used to look after my kids had horses, didn't they? So I was always active with that. I would be, you know, looking horses out. And so if it, I'm going to say, if I was given a, um, a survey to do or something like that, and it said on a scale of one to ten how active are you, I'd probably put a six or something like that back then. Whereas now I'd probably up that to probably an eight. Yeah. Like three times That's training the thing that a week. I think people miss as well as the daily movement. Like mm. you say, you're looking after kids and sorting out horses, horses, animals, shopping, all of that is still movement, mm. isn't it? And if you are busy doing that, uh, it does make a difference to your to your health and your life. So I don't know if I've said this before, but that um, study that looked at the two hours of movement and two minutes of movement mm. compared to 10 hours of doing nothing and 20 minutes at the end of the day. Mm. So the one where it was two hours and two minutes, had the same benefits on their health, their blood glucose, the, mm. um, the blood flow and concentration, then it does 20 minutes at the, end, at the end of the day. So two minutes of movement every two hours. I think everything's important, yeah. but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known all this because I'm not educated myself yeah. in it. But it's, so. it's a, you don't know it, but it is actually beneficial. Because yeah. people think, oh, I don't do actual exercise. But when you say you look at your day, you're like, yeah. well, you're actually active. So it's still... Yeah, I think for me as well, in terms of kind of trying to inspire other people into doing a bit of exercise, I have got a platform for that, because as you know, I'm well followed with what I do with my business, I'm quite active on social media, but I was one of those people, this this was me, when people talk to me about their illness, when people talk to me about diet, and people talk to me about going to the gym, it switched me off straight away, literally, because I think, oh no, here we go, but I don't want to be that person that bores other people, but if I can inspire people, because I know the benefits it's had for me, If I can inspire some other women to actually not necessarily join a gym, or so, I don't know, they might want to go join a gym, or just do some classes, or start walking. Go for a walk. Or just yeah. move that, for me, the actual starting walking, and a little bit of weight started to come off. I thought, do you know what, I could be I could be a little bit better than this. And I've got time at the end of the pandemic, you know, we weren't all doing the stuff that we're doing now, busy lives, trying to fit it all in, it's difficult. But if you can find that time, find that spot in the day that suits you, I'm a morning person, so I prefer to do mine in the morning than I, than I do in an afternoon. But if you can find that spot on that bit of time in your day yeah. to fit it in, I would just highly recommend it now. And I do, I talk about it all the time on my lives when I'm talking to my ladies. Just trying to, I think yeah. there was a few people I've been inspired to actually to do I think the biggest, thing, the biggest thing with that is, like you just said, you started off just walking with me mm. and it was just, I think you made some changes to your diet as well. I, yeah. I, I, I remember our first conversation was, in your garden, I think, with a beer in hand, I think so. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you'd already you'd started walking, you'd made some changes with your diet, yeah. and you'd already lost quite a bit of weight as yeah. well, I think. And then it was like looking for the next step. Well, people always think they need to go straight into like the big training three times a week, yeah. this with the diet, where it just needs to be that first Steady, yeah. step. Because we actually started once a week as well, didn't we? Yes, we did. We well, like, started on your pathway program, didn't yeah. we? Um, and then after that, it was time to decide what we wanted. But I thought, Do you know what, once a week's not going to be quite enough. So we did two, and I think eventually landed up yeah. on the three. Yeah. But 
again, for me, it's just made a massive difference. And at 57 year old, I remember going to see um, um, a doctor about my blood pressure, because prior to working with you guys as well, I had blood pressure was borderline. And I've never taken any medication for it. And then the weight came off and I said to this doctor, can you do me blood pressure when I went to see him? And he said, yeah, and he, and he did it all. And he said to me, you've got the pulse of an athlete. <laughs> and I said, what? He said, you've got the pulse of an athlete. He said, what do you do? I said, well, I, I do a bit of training and that and some weights and one thing and another. And he said, well, keep it up. And he said, because you've got the pulse of an athlete. I was like, oh my God, really? So yeah, I couldn't believe that. And that's only from the training. Yeah. Um, and the blood pressure was perfect. Yeah. So again... And I think you're going to get all different people on your podcast, but if I'm here to represent the older age group, which I am now at 57, um, I just think do something. Attempt a little tweak in your life, a change, mm-hmm. even if it like you just said. age as well, because yeah. there's so many younger people now that I never, never get into fitness. Because I think yeah. something I was thinking earlier is that we spend so much time on screens and watching people mm. do things, but never do them ourselves. Mm. People will watch other people in the gym, but never actually get them. Or watch people doing stuff, but never do it themselves because they're too busy to start scrolling. Um, so then all those things like high blood pressure and problems that we thought were chronic and would come a later life. Yeah. People are getting them now late 20s, 30s because they're not more active at a younger age. Oh, definitely. Like you say, just take the plunge. Yeah. And if you can sit for half an hour and scroll on your phone, you can go for a walk. Yeah. That's another thing. Yeah. And I'll tell you the other thing, just while we're on there, <laughs> that, um, that's made a big difference because I've, I've always, um, well, not, not so much for the last few years, but used to drink way too much alcohol. Again, pandemic came along, weather was great, you know, family were at home all the time, three o'clock in the afternoon, let's have a beer, let's have a glass of wine, a gin and tonic, you know, whatever that might have been. And even in my life prior to that, always drank way too much. But I remember joining the gym, having a drink one night, too much, and trying to train the next day, and I thought, bloody hell, I can't do this. <laughs> no chance. And so literally, I've said this to you on more than one occasion, Georgie, that I very, very, very rarely drink the night before a training session yeah. and I don't drink hardly at all at home these days um, and so that was another big thing and when you're training three times a week yeah I'm training three times a, times a week so a Sunday night's out a Tuesday night's out and a Thursday night's out for drinking I don't drink the other ones anyway these days but it, again that's another benefit of it because on, on the days that you do train as well you don't think oh I really want to have loads of drinks no, you, you don't actually want to have a good recovery yeah. because of all the training the, the water <laughs> intake's better because you know you should drink more and I, I, I always drink at least half a litre of water during the training session so it's easier then to get the other litre and a half in the rest of the day so yeah, there's all sorts of different ways of looking around it but yeah, yeah. it's made a, a big impact yeah. you've already mentioned some of the benefits obviously physically with mm. blood pressure and, and things like that is there any other like standout benefits that that you've realised that maybe don't stand out to other people, if that makes sense. As in, like, does that make sense? Yeah, I think... <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say, really, and again, I think it's more sort of... I don't know what I wouldn't necessarily say for my age, because like you rightly said, people, that your mobility, actually moving around on a day-to-day basis. I find that I'm not... There was a thing I was um, looking at the other day, and somebody said, I've got to that age where I shuffle, where I get out of bed in the morning and I shuffle. <laughs> and I have got to physically say to myself, don't shuffle when you get up. And it's no need you think that yeah. you're um, aching and all the rest of it in the morning, and you're not. Yeah. But yeah, a body shape change is another thing for me as well. I haven't had a waist for years, yeah. and now I've got a waist. <laughs> <laughs> and and I've not, we haven't actually sat down when we've done our training. You've never actually said to me, right, do you want the waist? And I, yeah. uh, but it's just, it's just become part of it. So I don't feel like I'm, I think I'm set at a kind of weight now, but my clothes are fitting better. Um, and body shape's changed, I'm more solid, um, and just general mobility mm. benefits, I think, are as much as... as I remember as you saying that um, mm. the lives that you do in the morning, they're getting changed and moving yes. around, yeah. that's become easier, because yes, yeah. it's like the mobility of putting oh, get quite out of breath at one point. Yeah. I would get quite out of breath, if it was in the summer, and, and you, ch- you know, your arms are above your head a lot, getting clothes on and off. I'll probably have to do, during the live video, 20 changes, maybe even more than that, yeah. of clothes, in and out of trousers, bending down, tying your shoes up, all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, and that, so much better. Yeah, because yeah. you're talking at the same time. And you're talking you? at so the same time. Hard. And recovery, that's another thing. When I first started with you, you put me on that bike, which I still ate. <laughs> <laughs> you put me on that and go, do a minute, or whatever it was. I'd be like, are you kidding? But now, and, and I could do the minute, and I could probably do it nearly as quick as I could do it now, but the recovery 
is so much quicker now. Yeah. We get off, we have that little bit of a few seconds doing something else, and by the time it's gone to go back on the bike again, yeah. the recovery is a lot better. Yeah, because when we first did it, it might have been like 20, 30 seconds, yeah. then complete rest, or like a high plank or something, but now it's like, hey, now we're going to do farmers carries, or now we're going to yeah. do yeah. Some ball slams. Or... <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like the ball slams, I guess. I like them. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to ask as well, because obviously you've got very busy work life, you need to be very productive, um, concentrate and everything. Do you find that exercise and taking care of your fitness and your health helps you with productivity and work life as well, so rather than just... Yeah, definitely. Day? Yeah. yeah, 100%. I've got much more energy about it. I've actually swapped to my lives, the live videos that I do, I've swapped them from... Um, doing during the day to 7.30 in the morning mm. so I sleep well I really do sleep well and I put that down to the exercise yeah. as well and looking after myself not drinking so much I'm usually tired by about nine half nine at night so I'll put myself to bed I'm up at quarter past six every day up dressed I look like I'm going out on a night out <laughs> because I've got to look right for the videos in the morning and I go live at half past seven every morning yeah. And as far as productivity goes, that's been absolutely monumental because we get so many people watching at that part of the day. Yeah. And I've still got the energy for the one in the day to do one or even two more sometimes. Yeah. So, yeah, from that point of view, so much better. And then I fit the training in at 10 o'clock yeah. on the Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, because we moved that to yeah, fit. Yeah, we moved it to fit in yeah. around that, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, 100%. That's what I think um, a lot of people miss out on is that the fitness that you gain from training means that everyday life becomes easier mm. because those small little odd jobs don't take as much energy no. from you because you're you're fitter and you can cope with more and, and from a mental and... perspective as well. Yeah. It's brilliant for you. They, they they do say, I mean I don't particularly think I struggle with mental health as such, mm. but when I've been in and done a session, twenty, thirty minutes after I could sleep on a clothesline and then after that the rest of the day I'm full of energy. Yeah. It's almost like I have a little lull straight after and then off I go again. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's I brilliant. think what you just said about mental health is that we always say everyone's got mental mm. and mental health. And whether you have problems or issues is whether you're taking care of mm. yourself or, or not. Like if you're exercising, you're talking to your support network and you're proactive with mm. it, then you might not have the problems as much or... Well, um, I think I've talked to you better. plenty, Georgina. You probably, <laughs> you probably know more about me than anybody on their little sessions. <laughs> yeah, I do, actually. I, you know We've more about, about me than my friends and dad. <laughs> yeah. I see each other three times a week. But it is, it's a little bit like when I see you three it's times therapy. a week for like nearly an hour. Um, that's a big chunk to actually sit and spend with somebody. We don't, we don't train in silence. We chit-chat about all sorts, yeah. don't we? Yeah. But, you know, it's quite therapeutic. And if you get yeah. a good trainer a good person to work with it's really key it's about the people that you surround yourself with as well yeah, yeah. and if you, if you don't gel and it doesn't work i think you've got to fortunately we did straight away didn't we yeah. but i think you've got to get that that right kind the of right balance coach, right. and the right coach that yeah. works for you and understands you because i don't feel like you've ever pushed me beyond my limits or anything like that you push me nicely but for me i don't want <laughs> I'm to i'm just laughing at the days that you come in like what did we do on monday <laughs> <laughs> my legs <laughs> The other day, what was I doing the other day? I came from that bar and you went, right, well, pull yourself up on that. And I got off and I went, I can't really do it. I said, I've no great desire to pull my chin above that bar. And then the next time I did it, I was like, I'm going to do this. We're getting into doing banded chin ups for like the last, what, six or eight weeks. Yeah. You just turned around and went, you don't have no desire to actually do these. <laughs> I was like, okay, fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, I never thought when I first started, because I will be honest with you, and I said you've heard me say this, yeah. when I very first started, I used to say to my mates, what's it like? They used to say to me, what's it like? And I said, well, I, I liken it to going in the torture chamber every week. As soon as they <laughs> open that door, I feel like I'm walking in. Because that was tough then. It was harder at the start yeah. than it is now. Yeah. And I know we've increased everything, but my, my mental attitude to work, towards it is a lot better. Whereas at the start, I used to dread it. I think, oh, God, what am I doing? Torture chamber. I forgot now, you used to call it. Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and now I come in and I think, right, what are we doing today? Yeah. And it was a change actually, Luke, um, yesterday. 
yeah. working with you, not that just slightly Back different to the what you do. <laughs> 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 He's going, do you think you could have a little bit more weight on that one? I'll go on then, we'll have a go. <laughs> there we are. In terms of like fitting it in, obviously you are busy with work and obviously you do travel quite a bit. Do mm-hmm. you find it quite easy fitting it in? Is it sometimes like a struggle to actually think about, I just need to go, or is it just, it's just in your diary and you just take it off now? When I'm at home now, I really don't want to miss it. At one time, and I've never, this is one thing I've never done though, and I have always promised this to myself, I will not make up excuses to not come. I can sit here now 100% and say I've never ever messaged you and lied and said, I'm not very well, yeah. or something's happened, or I can't make it in. It's always been a genuine reason for not coming, which is few and far between. Because the only person you're cheating then is yourself, because you're not, you know, if you're saying, oh, I've got a sore throat, or whatever it might be. And I also think, because I did my knee in skiing, didn't I? Can you remember? Yeah. And I continued then when the consultant really had said not to, but he didn't take the time to understand what I actually, how my exercise was. Mm. I think he probably thought I might have been in the gym moving my knees around and, and doing all sorts of other things. Yeah. Um, but because I've got a good understanding of how you guys worked, I knew you could definitely work something around. So I don't feel that even that was an excuse to, yeah. to not come. But yeah, as far as time goes, I've got my set time and I make sure I work, work around it. The days that I can't when I'm traveling, um, I like to get straight back on it as soon as I can when I get back. If there is an opportunity to train somewhere else, like I've been on the cruise a couple of weeks ago, there was a gym on there. I only went once, but it was once in seven days, which is better than nothing in seven days. And because you train me so well, I know how to use all the equipment, all the weights and everything. Um, And for me, that's a huge benefit to be able to walk into a gym, don't have to do an induction on any fancy machines or anything like that. Just pick the weights up, get on the floor, do my exercises, and then and then leave so that's huge i love that as well because a lot of people are scared of the weights and mm. they'll just go to the machines because you can't really do machines wrong like push or pull it mm. but i feel like you're like me now where it's actually the dumbbells that are more friendlier than what the that's machine is you look at the machine and go do a push or pull it like, <laughs> i look at the machines so there's a diagram on it and i think i've no idea i don't know what <laughs> think for the weight so yeah, i'd rather exactly. just go pick up a 10 kilo dumbbell or whatever it might be and, yeah. and do what you've taught me to do yeah. and at least if i do something I feel like I've done something in that space of time because the other part of this as well is that I don't want to restrict myself on food and drink when I'm away on holiday. I want to enjoy myself and I know that, again, that could be an excuse. I've had a holiday, I've put weight on, oh, it's going to be a nightmare, I'm not going to go anymore, blah, blah, you know, whereas just get back at it, get back at it and crack on again and, you know, I'm still not the perfect shape that, you know, you still, we all do it and it's human nature. You look at somebody else and think, oh, crikey, I wish I was, wish I had a flat stomach like that. But we've all got the things that are different, but on the whole, I feel so much more healthier, happier, and I've got much more energy and everything about me now. Which is what it's really about. Yeah, yeah. definitely, yeah. yeah. And people will sit there and think it can't be them, but I'll tell you it can because when I first started this journey, I wasn't in a fantastic place really I'd come out of a messy divorce um, lots of ups and downs had gone on and I could have quite happily sat there stuffing my face with food and drink and, and but I chose isn't always easy and I ch- but I chose to actually do something about it and it was walking past that mirror looking at myself thinking god I've got to do something about it <laughs> yeah so I did um, so I was going to say as well when you said the days that you don't always feel up for it mm. and sometimes you do come into the gym you actually say I'm just going to say I'm not really feeling great or I'm mm. tired or I actually just feel on the edge of like feeling a bit ill or mm. feel like a cold coming and how we actually change that session to suit mm. as well and knowing just wanting to exaggerate that not every session has to be 100% mm. or the best session ever but it's about listening to your body sometimes and that even though you're showing up mm. you can still change it to suit as well that's just really really that, helps I think for me that's been really beneficial because again it's not it's not excuse making but with sometimes the workload that I have sometimes I'll go off and I've probably done if I've had flight delays or been diverted or something I can sometimes do four or five flights in two or three days and it's exhausting yeah. but I don't want to not go when I come back because if I've missed a few sessions while I'm away so I'll come in and I'll say to you do you know what you always say to me how, how are you feeling today mm-hmm. And I said, you know what, I'm a little bit exhausted. I don't feel like I want to go all out today. And so you do adjust it that way. And I don't think everywhere's like that. I think there will be places that you go and they're just 
hammering you out all the time. Yeah. But again, that's worked for me. That's really worked for me. And it's another thing, it's the relationship you've got with your coach or your trainer, mm-hmm. the fact that you can be honest and say that. I'm not sure. Yeah, and not knowing that. Yeah, because some people might think, oh, if I say that, they would think I'm, I'm thinking I'm making excuses. Or yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But actually knowing that means that those days that you do feel a bit like, oh, do I really want to train? You know that you can come to the gym and go, I'm not feeling great. And yeah. You can always tell as well. Some days you're not feeling great, but actually they're the days you want to push it because yeah. then you feel better. Or yeah. sometimes it is that you do just need a light session. So it's gauging which which yeah. way to go with it. It is, and I think. Um, I think also that having the confidence to actually say, because if you haven't and you don't feel comfortable enough to say, that's when you're going to turn around and go, I don't feel very well today, I'm not going to come in. Yeah. So for me, doing something, yeah. if you're feeling a little bit off colour, is better than doing nothing. Yeah, because sometimes we just do mobility, don't we? Yeah. If it's yeah, that, I not that's a long time. time but no, we yeah. haven't, but on a, I, I can remember a few occasions where I've not felt 100%, where there's been mm. something going around or you pick something up. Yeah. Or you're just recovering, you haven't maybe been off and been recovering. Yeah. But again, I honestly think doing something is better than doing nothing at all. 100%, yeah. yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I agree with that. Oh, I thought <laughs> 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 I agree with that. Because yeah. um, you also joined another local gym as well, haven't you? Yes. Had to get any other session gym. Yeah. I said that helped over the winter with getting out when it was dark. Well, that was my that strategy behind that one. <laughs> is that I thought, there's a long winter coming up. Um, I live on my own and you get cooped up at night at five o'clock. And I, I am, if I'm not careful, a bit of a snacker. So, oh, and I always say to you, Georgina, if I don't buy it, I don't eat it. So, but I did find myself on the odd occasion buying the, you know, tortilla chips and things like that. <laughs> and thinking, so I thought, what I'll do, I'll join um, another gym. And now I can do classes and things on an evening, yeah. and it gets me out for a few hours. So by the time I get in after doing something like that, seven half seven, it's a cup of tea time, maybe a bit of supper in bed. Mm-hmm. So I've done that, but I wasn't keen on the classes. Mm-hmm. I found that the classes didn't really suit because, again, it, it's down to you guys because you trained me so well. Um, when I've been doing the classes, I don't think I'm doing the, the movements right, and I don't feel comfortable, and I don't want to strain myself. So I've, I've reverted actually to going and using the gym there as yeah. well on the times that. Um, you know, I'm not going to say I probably totally get my money's with that on it, if I'm totally brutally honest, but it's there, like, for the times that I haven't been able to fit in yeah. with you guys, or if you've been off and we've missed a session or whatever, um, and then you'll generally give me some exercises to do. Yeah. Um, That's what's hard with the classes as well, isn't it, of trying to keep up with the music or yeah. whatever they're doing, they go, but like you said before, by the time you've got into the first exercise, like, oh, right, we're doing rows. They go, oh, now we're doing squats. Like, oh, God, I've just got to yeah. up. But. Yeah, and I, yeah, I do take my time. I'm not one of them. Well, I say that. That's the way it should be. Yeah, yeah. But I do take my time with it, and I don't want to do it wrong and, um, mm-hmm. and feel like I've injured myself. And again, the coordination's not great. But, um, mm. but other things I've done, other things I've done on the back of training, which I would never have done, a yoga retreat that I went on yeah. in October, uh, that was fantastic, out in um, Ibiza, on the beautiful island of Ibiza, <laughs> yoga in the sunset and the sunrise. <laughs> Never done that in my life, but you said, well, most of the movements that we do for stretching are like yoga. Yeah. Have you done any yoga before? Never. No? Never. Mm-hmm. No. Well, wait, what, what, where did that come from? <laughs> that? Just well, a friend, of mine, um, a friend of mine, I have two girlfriends uh, were going on it. One of them is an instructor. She gets invited to be an instructor every year. But she does all like the um, club size dance class kind of things. Um, and they said, why don't you come along? You'd love it. <laughs> I was like, really? <laughs> well, then I, would, I wouldn't have gone. Three years prior to that, yeah. I would not have set foot on the place because I couldn't have done half of it. Yeah. Whereas this time, and we're going again in four weeks. Yeah. Booked yeah. it again. Yeah. Going again in April. Yeah. So good. And that was fantastic. Yeah, so I did. Like, and I held my own with it. I did hold my own with it. With the stretches and, and the stuff. I mean, I couldn't bend myself inside out like some of those that <laughs> do it regularly. But... No, it was good. And it was just all sorts of other things as well. But I would never have entertained a holiday like that mm. that was full of exercise and lots of fun as well. But there was lots what of different have, exercises. What was it that would have stopped you previously? Like, why? why well, would I just thought, like, oh, I don't fancy that. Yeah. I thought, oh, I don't mm. fancy that. I can't do it. I mean, and with all these people that are all skinny and all the rest of it, and I thought, no, I'll never be able to do it, you know. Yeah. And then once I started looking, and, I, and my friend sent me some pictures of her doing it, she went, honestly, Mel, it's great fun, you'll enjoy it. And I did. So, And I think it's the attitude I'd opened, to, to, opened up to exercise, where I've not had before. You know, when I said, people used to bore me, people talking about it. 
I could be boring everybody else now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's true. And I loved it. And I got on there and, um, yeah, well, I've got all the things that I do on that one. All sorts of dance classes and meditation and loads of different things that I would have never have done. Yeah. I think I came back raving about it, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's why I got it again. Took up straight <laughs> on again. Yeah. yeah so, so for anyone listening who is on the fence of wanting to start, mm. not knowing where to start, or just like overwhelmed, what would, from someone who was not always always been into, mm. into training, so what would your biggest... I'll go and see some professionals, like? like you guys. Go and see some professionals. Obviously, if you're local to where we are, go come and have a chat to you guys at Unit 1. For me, if you're going to start it, you might as well start it properly. Don't just go and join a gym because you're relying on yourself then mm. to go. And if that was me, I wouldn't have gone from the start. If I'd have joined a gym and said, right, I'm going to go at 10 o'clock every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, after about two weeks, I wouldn't have done it. So I'm, I'm held accountable because I know Georgina's waiting there for me every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 10 o'clock. And I am not that person that will ring up half an hour before or the night before and say I'm not coming. So for me, it's held me accountable, but definitely go see the professionals. And I think at any age, really, make sure you're lifting the weights correctly, doing it properly. Don't just go to the gym, join a load of mates and have them tell you how to do it. And for me, even if you just go, come and see you guys for however long and if you think maybe I don't know it might not be for you but the eight week puppet yeah, yeah make sure that you know what you do when you're doing correctly yeah because I'm not going to touch wood really because I don't think I need to but I've never come in and said I, I feel achy or I've injured myself I think the very very early days we did something and I'd had a twinge in my back because I'd had a previous back yeah. a back issue and we kind of avoided those exercises for a while, but then all the muscles in that area built up and I've never had another problem. Yeah, I remember it, it was like your glute hip yeah. area, so we did a lot of like glute bridges and banded work, didn't yeah. we? and then just kind of disappeared. Well, definitely, for people thinking about doing it, well, definitely, if you think about doing it, have a go at it, but go to a professional, come to somebody who really does know the stuff, not just on the fitness stuff but your nutrition as well, because we talk about that a lot yeah, as well, yeah. don't we? Yeah. And I am some days a lot better than others on that, so... Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, again, I'd never lie about it. I'd never say to you, yeah, it's been fantastic. If it hasn't, I'll tell you that I had fish and chips last night and they were lovely. <laughs> Most of the time, I'll go, oh, yeah, fancy fish and yeah, chips. Yeah, fancy fish and chips today. Um, and I think that, that's also another thing. I'm trying to get as much out as how I feel about it as I can because a lot of people, again, will use the food as an excuse. I've had a terrible week. My diet's awful. I'm not. I'm going to knock it on the head. Well, don't because that's only a week. That's only a week. I had fish and chips last night, one lot of fish and chips. It's not going to ruin the rest of my week. And if you have one, you know, like this morning, I didn't even eat a breakfast that I would normally eat. But it doesn't matter, does it? You've just got to get over that one day and start the next day again and go on with that. Even if you have three or four days in a row that are rubbish, yeah. it's better than continuing it for the next year and starting again after Christmas, isn't it? Because that's the, kind of the stereotypical time to start these things and then stop by January, by February. Yeah. That's why I like that 28 meals a week analogy where it's like you've got three meals a day mm. plus a snack times seven days. So you've got 28 meals. So if three of them you're eating out, you've still got 25 opportunities to make to the right that. choice. Definitely. So you can definitely make an average of a, a good week rather yeah. than being a bad week all the time. And that other thing, that analogy about, I mean, it's easy for me because I live on my own. It's, when, it's difficult when you've got a family or you're cooking for somebody else. Or you're a bit younger, because of like when the grandchildren come round. How many kids actually finish the food these days? They don't really. But it's always left there when you can't go. <laughs> I love that. Don't waste yeah. it. <laughs> and you almost look at them going, leave that, leave that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you always look at them like that. But my thing is, it when you're shopping for yourself, um, if you're, oh, I could say, fortunate to live on your own, I'm unfortunate, it depends which way you look at it. I'm quite fortunate, I think. Um, uh, if you don't buy it, you can't eat it. Yeah. And I go to my cupboard five times a night and hope that there's something in there that I've missed and it never is. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that's kind of how it works with me. Yeah. But, yeah, food is, it can be tricky. Mm-hmm. But don't let one bad day a week. We're in the rest so, of the there's an the um, analogy in business as well. It's what my business coach used to say to me. Never take a day, week or month in isolation. And it's the same with food. Yeah. A day, week, or month. Look at it over the whole year and look where you are on an average of the whole year. And it's the same on the business analogy, that yeah. one. Because okay. I can do a Robin a really bad day today. They don't, you know, we could have a fantastic day tomorrow. Yeah. So it's the same kind of thing. The same with weight, isn't it? That's mm. what we say about weight. No single weight measurement on its own means yeah. anything. 
Yeah. That's why I think with cameras just stay away, unless it's applicable to a certain client, but most of the time it's like, it's not worth knowing. No, no when I look now, hard. when I got down to my lowest weight, I am probably about a stone heavier now than I was at my lowest weight, but the clothes that I've got fit me as well, if not better mm. than before. So mm. although the weight had dropped off, I was a stone lighter, the body shape was completely different. Mm. The clothes now fit me a lot better. Yeah, wow. Except the fact that I did burst the arm out of a dress on the cruise. Oh, yeah. Because I think... <laughs> <laughs> Two big arms. My arms have got slightly bigger. I reached across for the pepper and it split the dress under the arm. But anyway, that's another story. Too, too many too I'll blame, I'll blame the, I'll blame the uh, poor quality dress and it wasn't a till it's one. <laughs> <laughs> So you've touched on the business and tilts a little bit. What's what's the plans for that over the next? For that, well, just to keep, yeah. So, yeah, well, to keep going. Really, we are looking at um, a slow and steady growth at the moment. There's loads of ways of looking at matching. I've had this conversation today. Lots of different ways in which you can grow the business. But I think for us at the moment, we're looking at a nice, slow, steady growth of getting the new customers in, keeping going like we are. I'm still busy and active doing my live videos every day. Um, yeah, I'm globe trotting all over the place. I do a bit of all sorts, really, to be fair. But I've uh, got a fantastic team at Tillits that look after everything when I'm not about. Um, so, yeah, just a slow, steady growth um, trajectory on that one. We've just brought the new jewellery brand online as well. Quiller & Co, that's another one, Silver Jewellery. Bro- um, jewellery. Yeah, that good? Uh, good, yeah, yeah, really good. I had a really promising start with that. So. Yeah. That's another one to keep uh, to keep. Going you've got on. such loyal customers as well, mm. haven't they? That yeah. when you bring something out, they'll be so invested in it because they know yes. that you've put so much time. Well, the trust us as well. The yeah. trust us because you know we never we're always a bit, a bit like the workout thing and going to the gym. You've got to be honest. Mm. Um, the, the minute you're not honest with anybody, customers or yourself mm. or the people you're working with, then you know it's not. Uh, yeah. yeah. So no, we've got a fantastic loyal following, great team. So I'm very fortunate. In that respect, and I absolutely love what I do. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't want to stop anytime soon. Yeah. <laughs> Apart from the off holiday. Yeah. <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah. I need that. Um, so I just wanted to ask as well. So, people listening, if they wanted to start a journey or um, what is some advice? What would you say? Maybe three top things that have helped you. I know you said about getting a professional, but mm. um, any other things that have really helped you move forwards that maybe would help you out? Well, I think really it's taking the step to um, it's taking the step to decide to start off with it that you want to do something with it because I get so many people who will say to me, "Oh, Mel, you're an inspiration." You know, I don't know how you do. It. Where do you get your energy from? Well, one is that I've found that energy because I do I do what I do and I give all some most creating energy around yourself. Um, I take the professional advice. Just tell me, ask me the question again. I've lost my so, um, three three. Bits of advice for anyone listening that wants to get started. That wants to get started. Well, I am a bit of a I am a bit of a Nike character. You know the Nike brand where it says the tick and it says just do it, and that is me really. Yeah. Um, and I have been known for winging it quite a bit over over my life. I am a person that is if um, I'm told that you can't do something or we're, well, how are we going to do that? And I'll kind of say, well, look, we'll make it happen. I don't quite know how we'll do it, but we'll make it happen. So I have got that kind of an attitude to things. But yeah, if you want to start, just do it. You've got to start somewhere. Yeah. Whether you start on the walk-in, whether you come to a professional. You might have a friend who's, who's doing it. There's loads of places you can go mm-hmm. where you can get a day pass or your friend can introduce you to go to somewhere. Just try something light and, yeah. and, and, have, a go, and have a go that way. But I don't think you... Most people, it's yourself that will stop you. It's your own attitude that will stop you doing it. So try and think beyond your limitations, if you like. And um, does, that, does that make sense? Yeah. 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 But think beyond your limitations. If, you, if your head's saying to yourself, I can't do it, I can't. A bit like me on that thing the other day. I'm thinking, oh, I can't do it, don't really want to do it. But then on the third time, I'm thinking, oh, let's see if I can do it. <laughs> so it was one of them. But you could, you know, people's limitations, what you think you can or can't do, is the most likely thing to stop you. So try and adjust your train of thought, push yourself out. I do it with my ladies all the time with fashion. It sounds ridiculous, this, but I try and push my ladies to wear something that they wouldn't normally wear, maybe a colour, or um, at the minute we're getting everybody into gold. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And yeah, so it's just about pushing the boundaries. I saw you wearing uh, bright zones. purple trousers the other day. Yeah, that's all nice. I'm a little yeah. pinto. A bit different, so. a different subject. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I just thought that is a good way of yeah, showing, getting out of your comfort zone. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the comfort zone is talked about a lot, but it's definitely a thing. Yeah. 100% a thing. And I do want to say, if anybody's mm-hmm. known me for a long time, that um, if I actually can do it, then I think anybody can. And I know that's a bit of a cliche again, but it's true. I'm I remember you saying that about a year and a half ago when mm-hmm. we did um, a video. And you said that I never thought I'd be here and doing this. No, no but the fact that I am really shows that because I, I was that person that thought, oh my god, training, you know, oh, what's that going to do? But yeah. it's amazing what it does. Yeah, yeah, really amazing. Mm-hmm. And I and actually. I will own up and say it now, I actually do quite enjoy it. <laughs> it's not quite the sort of chamber now, but it was, yeah. you know. Um, and it's, uh, yeah. and you miss it as well, don't you, when you've not been? Oh, yeah. yeah, you do. I think that's part of your psychological yeah. um, side of it, that you think, mm-hmm. like next week, I'm already now thinking, Christ, I'm going to do one session next week. How am I going to make up for that? Yeah. Because <laughs> the longer you leave it as well. To introduce yourself back to it, I think, is more difficult. Yeah. Because you found it harder. Yeah, and you ache you more yeah. again. Like, mm. It's weird, I always say this, like, the more you do, the less achy you are, mm. to an extent. But, like, if you only do it once a week, you usually always ache from that session. But when you have a good little balance, you just kind of keep it ticking in, don't you? I think the other thing as well, I, I know I will say this, is there's not many weeks go by where some part of your body doesn't ache a little bit. Mm. And that makes me think mm-hmm. that every muscle in my body at some point in a week or a month or whatever it might be has, has been used and worked and, and, and the horse riding thing, I did say about that, I've ridden horses now for years and years and years and I've just come off a cruise and I went on a, uh, I booked myself a, um, a trek in the mountains and as I'm actually pressing the button to press play, uh, pay to book for the excursion, I thought what the hell are you doing? <laughs> And I got there, and it was an hour and a half ride, and they put me on this big stand, and it was quite a big horse. And my feet were numb by the end of it, and the hardest part was getting off. But once I was off, I thought, I'm never going to be able to walk the next day. Yeah. I'll, I'm an hour and a half on the horse, I've not ridden for years, and not a single ache, not one. Good. Not one, I couldn't yeah. believe it. And that's got to be down to this. Yeah. Can't be anything else. Because yeah. I'm thinking, if I'm not careful, I'm going to ruin the rest of this cruise, because I literally would not be able to walk. Nothing. I was just going to say the benefit of that is one, the confidence of actually going, yeah, I'm going to book yeah. this if I feel fit enough to do it. Yeah. And then two, like say, not it, they're not ruining the rest of your holiday, yeah. going, well, I can't get off the boat to look around because my legs are killing it. Or, what I did yeah. the previous year, um, and I was lucky enough to do a cruise the previous year, I went on Corsica, and the only excursion left, and I wonder why, <laughs> the only excursion left was a bike ride. On Corsica, <laughs> it was 40 degree heat, and I never picked up a bike, and I've not ridden a bike on the roads for years, yeah. and the first thing they tell them is that the Corsicans don't like bike riders, mm. the drivers, so you've just got to watch yourself, else with any opportunity to knock you off on the board. <laughs> oh <laughs> like, my god. I, the ten, I think it was about a 10 mile bike ride along the coast. You, remember you, sent, you sent me a picture of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that was good. In all the times I never dreamed of doing it. Never dreamed of doing it. In any other time, so yeah, there's another couple of um, benefits to it. Yeah, that's what I love as well. All the other things that you've seen on that holiday and yeah. the experience that you've had that you would never have had before. Definitely not. I would never have been up in the mountains riding a horse, looking mm-hmm. at the beautiful scenery. I would never have ridden 10 miles along the Corsican mm-hmm. coast. I could have sat in a cafe or a restaurant drinking and boozing and whatever else, yeah. but I didn't. And actually, do you know what? It was the best thing to do in that heat because as you were riding along, the the breeze was lovely. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's having the confidence. I was no way because I was a bit worried about that. I must admit, when I got off the boat, I thought, "Am I going to be able to keep up?" But I look at the people around me; they were quite a bit younger than me. In fact, I was probably the oldest person on that, apart from the guy running it. <laughs> and I thought, "I'm not going to keep up with this lot," but I did. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's one thing when we talk like confidence and stuff. When people say, "Oh, yeah, the confidence that training gives," it's like. People who, who are trained to think, oh, it's the confidence of just walking around like, look at me, I'm trained to like, yeah, It's not exactly the confidence <laughs> to just do things that you might not do if you didn't train 100%, as well. 100%. There's no way on this earth prior to starting <coughs> working with you guys, I would have booked a bike ride anywhere, <laughs> let alone on course <laughs> in 40 degrees. And I certainly wouldn't, I mean, I probably might have got on a horse just for a little trot around mm-hmm. an arena or something locally because I know a few horsey folks, but there's no way I would have booked an hour and a half's trek. Um, 
up and down mountains mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. in a foreign country. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, but you're quite right. You didn't have a thought of it like that. You get to see so much more. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. So your biggest take home would be to uh, just do it. Is that just do it. Just do it. <laughs> Crack on. Yeah, have a go. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, and all of that. But if look at me as an example, I was that person completely switched off by anybody telling me what they thought to go into a gym or telling me how much weight they'd lifted or how many miles they'd ran or any of that. Totally switched off by it. Um, but now I've started it. I am in. Um, I'm at risk of being that person. Because <laughs> <laughs> every day I tell my ladies, they'll probably say when they listen to this, yeah, you are. So every day I'm like, I'm off to the gym this morning, <laughs> posting my pictures. I've even got your video of me now, yeah. on top of my social media. But yeah. Mm. So yeah, so that takeaway, definitely. Definitely get on, have a go. And you're never too old. Again, the kind of following that I've got on social media, I've got ladies of all ages that actually do go into gyms. There's one lady I'm thinking of in particular. She's well into her 70s, she's partially sighted, and she sends me pictures and videos of her in the gym all the time. She's fantastic. Oh, wow. So age, don't let age limit you, because it, it, there's things you can do. Yeah. 100%. Mm. Well, we'll wrap it up there. Well done. Yeah. Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. That's all right. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah.